Outside my window at the moment, there is a great, tall, strong tree. So I shall look at it for a little while and contemplate its, its character and its strength. It's rather nice to think of it as having perhaps a spirit inside it because it does have roots that go right deep into the ground. It's got a really tough bark and it seems very tall and upright. The branches are swaying in the wind. They seem flexible and receptive to what's going on. It reminds me of some quality of that in humans and how I can perhaps feel that myself. It's providing shade for anybody who needs it. But just by being there, it reminds us of something. Over the last few months, I think a lot of us have been really enjoying walks in the country or in parks or down a road where there are lots of trees. Trees somehow seem very reassuring at times of stress and just being near a tree makes you feel very good. This story is about spirits who live in trees. And in the ancient stories, spirits who live in trees communicate with one another, they feel sorrow and they feel joy, and they can listen to talk about the teaching. So for that reason, it's very important to respect trees. And it was felt in ancient times that all the trees and spirits and rivers and mountains around you were all part of a, an environment which you needed to look after and to care for. I don't think the word ecology had been invented, but there's an underlying sense in the stories that looking after our neighbours in the forms of the rivers and the mountains and the lakes and the plants is just very good for us and for them. And in fact, there's even a rule that monks are not allowed to uh, break off branches of trees. And there's a very nice little story about why this was the case. Once upon a time, at the time of the Buddha, a tree spirit lived very happily in a tree with her family. She actually had uh, children living there as well. I suppose the branches or the offshoots of the tree. And long before a rule was invented about this, a monk came along and wanted to build a dwelling. So he cut a really nice branch off this tree. And of course, the child in there was very upset and had to run away and leave his own home. He was basically kicked out of his home and his mother was very upset. So she thought, right, I'm going to kill this monk, this bhikkhu. He shouldn't be harming my children. This, my child is upset now. My shape and my home is not as it should be. It's been violated. And then she thought, hmm, no, I think oh, the better idea would be for me not to behave back to the monk as he had behaved to me, but rather I'll go and see the Buddha. So she goes to see the Buddha, who's in a very nice grove, uh, where it's surrounded by trees of all kinds and wonderful plants and bushes. She says, look, I really had my home broken into by this uh, person wanting to build a hut. I don't think it's fair. And I was actually going to kill this person, but when I saw that he was a Buddhist monk, I thought, well, I'll come and see you and just complain about it. And the Buddha said, you did the right thing. We've never had a rule about this sort of thing before because it's just never happened. But from now on, I'll make sure that no monks in my order will break branches from trees because they could be damaging the spirits that live inside. Thank you very much, she said. But I don't really have a very nice home now that Brahm has gone. What shall I do now? And the Buddha said to her, 
I can see a tree over there, and he pointed in the grove with this wonderful, rich vegetation and woodland around. Why don't you just live there? Oh, thank you, said the, the tree spirit. That's wonderful. And the reason it's so wonderful is now I'll be able to hear all your talks firsthand. And um, we hear from the ancient storytellers that this was a very wonderful thing for her. Because now even the gods didn't have such a front row seat as she had to hear all the talks of the Buddha and to know that she was living protected because nobody would harm a tree where the Buddha was and where the Buddha's monks were. And so from that time onwards, uh, it's always been a rule for monks that they never break the branches of the tree. Now, that's a very nice story, and you might think, well, why was the Buddha so sensitive to tree spirits? And the reason is, of course, is that he, in one of his lives, many, many eons before, he had been a spirit in um, a clump of kusa grass. And when he'd been a spirit in that clump of grass, there'd been a very beautiful tree. And the deity that lived there was very grand and the tree had a wonderful canopy and sheltered all beings. So it was called the good luck tree. Now the Buddha at that time, the Bodhisattva, was just a very humble kusa grass. He was a, a clump of grass. But he made friends with this very grand tree and they, they used to communicate with one another. And we know, in fact, that scientifically, plants and trees all do communicate to one another through the soil. And the story just sort of uh, says that in a certain way. Now, there was a king's palace nearby and a beam in that broke. So the carpenters went out in search of a new beam and they saw this magnificent lucky tree and thought, right, that's the one that's going to give us a beam for the king's palace. So they marked it and said they'd come back the next day. Now the spirit of the tree heard them saying this and started crying. She was just so upset. What on earth am I going to do? I'll have no home and my beautiful, beautiful tree will have gone. Now, I said she because actually the, the spirit trees, they're sometimes called she in the stories and sometimes he. They're kind of spirits, really. Now, the Bodhisattva was a friend of this spirit and um, he said, don't worry, just trust me, I'll make sure you'll be all right. So the tree spirit slept peacefully that night, knowing that all would be well. The next day, the carpenters came along with all their saws and uh, started getting ready to work on the tree. And then one of them looked at the trunk. Now, what had happened was the spirit of the kusa grass tree, the bodhisattva, had turned himself into a chameleon and had made the whole of the trunk look as if it was pitted with mould and holes and was in a really, really bad way, as if it was rotting. So the carpenters looked at it and said, Ugh, this tree's awful. We're not going to stay here and, and cut it down. Let's just go home. So they decided to go home and left the tree in peace. The spirit that lived in the tree was just so grateful. And saying thanks to the Bodhisattva, the spirit uttered these verses about friendship. Friends are true, friends st stay with you, and it doesn't matter whether they're of high or low status. If they're a friend, they're a friend indeed. Now the Kusa grass was just a very low status spirit, but he had helped the tree in his time of need. So after that they continued to live in their forest very happily. So I think that's why the Buddha remembered what it was like 
to be a tree. <laughs> uh, and we can say it in, in modern terms that he just had a real sensitivity to other living things around him and understood how they would experience things. I don't know if there are spirits in trees, but I certainly feel when I walk past a tree that there's some kind of living presence there. And I think these stories show us how we can respect these living presences and feel that they're part of the environment, our ecology, if you like. They're part of our emotional and physical world around us. And a good tree can be a very reassuring thing in a time of need. And many, many times in the uh, teachings, the one who is straight and upright is compared to a tree. It said so in Melinda Panya, uh, Melinda's questions, that the person who is wise and kind and aware of beings around them is like a great tree that provides shade and shelter for other beings. And I think the, the Buddha's teaching in these stories shows us that kind of solidity and strength that we should respect in others and perhaps communicate ourselves. So I liked those two stories, which is why we had two stories today about the importance of trees and how they can show us something about ourselves too. <laughs>